It can happen from sitting in a chair improperly. It can happen when walking on something you shouldn't be walking on. It can happen when you walk in the parking lot and aren't watching where you walk. It happens when you carry something and trip. It happens when you slip off a ladder. That's right, slips and falls. How does it happen, and how can you prevent it? Well, it's easy to see how it happens. You're not paying attention to where you're walking or what you're doing, and something happens to cause you to trip, slip, or fall. You need to know how you can prevent these accidents. First of all, it's important to understand that the vast majority of slips and falls occur because the person is not paying attention to where they are walking, or what they're doing, and they either trip on something or the floor surface is slippery. We can describe slips and falls as a dual cause accident. We say dual because there may be two causes. First, the person wasn't paying attention. The second cause could be a slippery floor, an electrical cord that shouldn't have been there, or a number of other potential hazards. To reduce about 90% of slips and falls, just pay attention to what you're doing and be aware of your walking or sitting surfaces or positions, and you'll eliminate slips and falls. Okay, let's look at the other 10%, and we'll call these physical hazards that can cause slips and falls. No matter what industry you work in, you generally have a building in which to work. The first step is to have a good maintenance program to keep the outside walking surfaces in good condition. A consistent sweeping program with either a push sweeper or a mechanical sweeper can reduce the level of dirt, grit, or sand in the parking lot and around entrances. Cleaning is a fundamental safety measure to help reduce slippery walking surfaces, but it's also very important to reduce the amount of dirt, sand, ice, and snow from being carried inside the building. On the inside of the building, the first 15 to 25 feet from the entrance are the most important. This is where any dirt or other debris is carried into the building from the bottom of your shoes. Walk-off mats are recommended at the entrances to help clean your shoes as you walk inside. These mats wipe off dirt and moisture, which reduces the slippery shoe surfaces from the outside dirt. These mats should be about 15 to 25 feet long and should be wide enough to accommodate everyone walking through. Next, frequent cleaning of the walk-off mat is critical. If they're not cleaned frequently, dirt, grease and moisture builds up and instead of cleaning your shoes as you walk on the mat they add slippery water grease and other things to the bottom of your shoes a dirty walk-off mat is much worse than no mat at all one word about mat cleaning it's important to clean the top but don't forget the bottom of the mat dirt under the mat can build up and cause the mat to slip or bunch up when you walk on it Naturally, all walking surfaces must be kept clean. Think about the equipment that rolls over the same floor on which you walk. Forklifts, hand trucks, and other equipment can have grease, oil, solvents, and other debris on their tires and can make walking surfaces very slippery. Next, you need to pay attention to the type of wax that is applied to walking surfaces. Purchasing departments and maintenance personnel are generally very knowledgeable about types of wax, but watch out for contaminated wax. This means the wax is contaminated with bacteria and can cause good wax to become very slippery. That's why maintenance personnel are advised never to pour unused wax back into large wax containers. It doesn't take much bacteria to ruin a barrel of wax. The same thing applies when using the proper tools for cleaning. Always use clean wax applicators, clean mops, and other tools. You never use the same wax applicator or mop to clean up spills. Don't forget that all waxes are not created equal. There are different types of waxes for tile floors, concrete floors, and so on. Be sure you follow the manufacturer's recommendations as well when applying and using cleaning materials and waxes. Floor maintenance is very important, but it's everyone's responsibility. If you see a spill, clean it up. If you can't do the job, be sure to warn others and report it so it can be cleaned up as quickly as possible. If you notice a potential slip and fall hazard, 
report it to your supervisor so it can be corrected. Clean up spills when they occur. You'll notice sticky parts of the floor around soda machines. That's because someone spilled a liquid and no one bothered to clean it up. Different spills require different procedures. Oils and grease and even mayonnaise spilled on a surface is difficult to clean. First you wipe up the spill. Then it may be necessary to use a gritty powder cleaner to get into the pores of the concrete or tile to remove the grease or oil. After that, you can then clean the powder cleaner. Just wiping with a mop doesn't always make the surface clean. We're not trying to make maintenance persons out of everyone, just some basic information to help you understand what it takes to keep floor surfaces free of slip and fall hazards. It requires your assistance. Okay, let's now look at something almost everyone does by instinct or habit. When you walk up or down stairs, hold the handrail. In case you slip or trip, the hand on the handrail will help prevent you from falling. This has been a safety habit since stairs were first introduced. There are some hazards associated with stairs. Torn carpeting, damaged tread nosing, oily treads and dirty stairs. Keep in mind that your shoes should be clean and non-slippery when walking up or down stairs. If your stairs need some attention, report it to your supervisor. Next, falls from ladders can be quite serious. Broken or damaged rungs can cause falls, but more than likely it will be greasy or slippery shoes. Also, a person will stand on the ladder improperly or stand on the top two steps, which will create a stability problem. Never stand on the top two rungs of any step ladder. Never lean past your belt buckle. When you lean too far from the edge of any ladder, the center of gravity shifts, and the next thing you know, there will be an accident. Getting into and out of vehicles. Never jump from trucks or other vehicles or equipment. You're asking for trouble. If you look at statistics, you'll find that most non-driving truck driver injuries result from getting into or out of their truck. They either don't hold on to handrails or they jump off their truck. Proper footwear can also help reduce slips and falls. High heels, certain leather on the soles of shoes, even the popular tennis shoes can be very slippery on some surfaces. This is particularly true if your shoes have any grease, oil, or other residue on them. Walk only in authorized walking areas. Walking over conveyors can cause a slip or fall. Watch out for wet or slippery surfaces. Don't walk over boxes, pallets, or other materials. Use the proper walkway. Think about the walking surface on which you're walking. If you're walking on a carpeted surface that will change to tile or concrete, be aware that different floor surfaces will have a different level of friction. The carpet will have good friction, but the tile or concrete will be slippery compared to the carpet. If you're aware of the difference, you'll make the necessary adjustments to prevent a fall. Don't forget about telephone wires, electrical cords, and other things that can cause a trip. Even in the office, open file drawers can cause trip hazards. If you read any textbook on safety, the three E's are always mentioned. Engineering, Education, and Enforcement. Engineering is correcting potential physical hazards or making your facility as free of defects as possible. Education is making sure that everyone is aware of safety and everyone is trained in accident prevention. In the case of slips and falls, it means paying attention to where you walk so slips and falls won't occur. The enforcement part of the equation means your company has safety rules and they are enforced. It's pretty simple. Engineering, education, and enforcement. Words to live by. Well, that's about it. Not much else to say about slips and falls other than it's your responsibility. Be aware of potential slip and fall hazards, then take the necessary action to prevent them. Safety is a team effort, and we want you to do your part because it's important to the whole team. Thank you.